In this tutorial, we're going to build a task management app using Python and an async ORM called Piccolo. And we're going to try and do it all in 10 minutes. So first of all, we're going to create a virtual environment. So let's open up the terminal. So I'd like to work in a dev folder. So virt virtual lambs was something that were added. Python free. So you can now create them really easily. So just creating it. There we go. So we'll just change into that folder. And inside the bin, you'll see the activate command. So if we just activate the virtual environment. Now, whenever we install a Python package, it'll be within that virtual environment and it won't bleed out to the wider system. Okay, so now let's create our project folder inside the virtual environment. Okay, so now we're ready to install Piccolo. It may take a few seconds just while it's compiling some dependencies. There we go. So you can verify that it's installed by entering the piccolo command. You can see here are all the subcommands. So now we're going to create our piccolo project. So if we do the piccolo command again, we'll see there's a project new option. So let's check that out. So any of these subcommands, you can use the help flag just to learn a bit more. So for this one, we can specify the engine by default as Postgres, which is fine for now. So let's just go ahead and do that. And you'll see now that this piccolo conf.py file has been created. So we're going to check this out in VS Code. I didn't like that. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. So if you look at the file, it's quite simple. We specify the database and we specify an app registry, which as the name suggests is where we register all of our apps. So let's go ahead and create a new app. So if you use the piccolo command again, you'll see there's an app new subcommand. So let's have a look at this. So we just need to give it a name. So let's call this one tasks. And you'll see there's now a tasks folder. So we have the piccolo app.py and this contains an app config. So the app config, it gives the app a name, specifies where the migrations live. We specify our tables. So tables, the same as models and other frameworks. Migration dependencies are other Piccolo apps, which we want to run the migrations for before this app. And commands is where we can register custom commands, which will appear alongside all of these built-in ones. Okay, so let's populate this so we have a table to work with. So I'm gonna go inside my tables.py. I'm gonna install this linter as well, so it stops complaining. Okay, so we're going to call it task, inherits from table. So this table needs some columns, so let's import some columns. So I can import their car and boolean. So let's give our task a title. And you can see here that by default, that's 255 max characters. Let's just make that 512. And then we'll add a completed flag. You can see here that it's false by default, so we're happy with that. Okay, so let's go back to our Piccolo app. And now we want to add this table to our table classes. 
So we'll just import that from the tables, import task. There we go. And before we forget, we need to register a new app with the app registry. Okay. So now we're going to create our first migration. So if you look here, this is migrations new. So Piccolo migrations new. So you can see we just need to give it an app name and we can specify this auto flag. So this auto flag will create the migration for us. So I highly recommend using this. So our app is called tasks and we're going to specify auto. And you can see here that it detected that there's one new table and that table has two new columns. So let's go and have a look. So inside our Piccolo migrations folder, this new migration got created. So that's the timestamp when it's created. Um, so you don't need to understand this too much, but this forwards code routine just needs to return a migration manager. And you can see here that it's migration manager adds a table and adds two columns, which is as we'd expect. Okay, so now we have the migration, let's run it. So one useful command is migrations check. So you can see here that it detects there's one migration and it hasn't run. So you can see here that we just need to do the app name. So I'm going to run tasks. And it says here that it ran that migration. So first of all, we need to install Piccolo Admin. Okay, and then we're going to create an app.py. This is going to be our ASCII app. Let's open up VS Code. Okay, so let's find our app.py. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to use Starlet for the basis of our ASCII app. So Starlet's a really nice framework. This is our app. And you can see that um, you register some routes with Starlet. So let's go and create a route. So Here we go. So create admin just accepts some tables. So I'm going to go and grab from tasks tables, my task table. So there we go. So this admin is actually its own mini ASCII app. So this is the beauty of ASCII. You can just nest them quite easily. So let me show you how that's done. And here, here with mount, I can mount my admin and slash admin. So this is it, this is our application. So now we just need a way to run it. So we're going to use Ubercorn. So Ubercorn is a server which runs ASCII apps. There we go. So if we run this now, hopefully this will run. Okay, we made a mistake there. Um, what happened?
There we go. Okay. So if we go to slash admin, we now have an admin. But what you'll realize is you need to sign in to see the admin as you'd expect. So let's do something about that. So we're going to go back into our Piccolo Conf. We're going to add Piccolo Admin as an app. And what this does is it will provide the migrations needed to store those users in the database. So now if I do migrations check, you'll see that there's a couple of migrations that haven't run. So let's run those. So we'll do user, we'll do session auth. And now if we check them, then they've all run, so that's good. So now we have a user table, but we don't have a user. So if you look here, we have this command user create. So let's give that a go. So let's create a user. Email doesn't matter for now, we'll give him a password. And yes, they need to be an admin. Okay, so let's run our application again. Let's open this up. All right, so we're at admin again. So let me enter this user. Okay, we're in. So you can see here that this is the user I just created. We also have a dark mode. And then this is the table task. So there aren't any at the moment, but we can easily add one. Let's create that. So there we go. There's now a new row. And we can just verify this quickly using PG admin. So here are the tables. So here's Piccolo user, sessions, task. And here's the do the washing up task. And you can also filter and sort. Okay, so we didn't quite pull it off in 10 minutes, but it wasn't a bad shot. So hopefully it's been useful. Um, in future videos, I'll show how you can create an API very easily around Piccolo tables. So the reason we're able to create this admin so quickly is there's machinery under the hood, which can take a Piccolo table and automatically add all the CRUD operations to it and the filters and the ordering. Um, so hopefully you'll join me for that one. Thank you.